Hello and welcome to Curse High Fitness. I'm Curse High and what I'm going to be doing for you today is going through some questions that I've been asked on social media. So this week I actually posted a few posts out there um, about asking some questions to me um, and obviously from that what I was going to do is make a video like this one and answer as many questions as I could. So I've actually got two cameras going here at the moment. One is live on Periscope, the other is a video that I'm going to be doing for YouTube. So obviously going to be answering some live questions which I've also got on my laptop and also we're going to be asking some of the questions I already have saved from you guys as well. So going to see how popular this video is. Obviously if it's popular we'll get some load of Q&A videos done. If not at least I've helped you guys out. So we're going to go right from the top. So I'm just making sure this is all connected which it is good. So question one, what I'll also do is post a little link at the bottom so you can see who asked the question, so you know that I haven't made the questions up and you guys have actually asked me. Um, so Hugo, how do you stay motivated is question one. So I personally stay motivated just because I know what my end goal is. Sometimes people don't have goals and um, it's hard to stay motivated when you've got nothing to aim towards. So I always say make sure you've got a goal, an end date and um, also seeing my clients when they improve gets me really sort of fired up and make me want to change and make myself even better as well. Hopefully that's answered your question. Next question. What cardio do you prefer for fat loss, hit or list? Um, me personally, I, I literally do like both. Um, hit is nice and fast, uh, a lot harder work but quicker, whereas obviously the list training is more steady state, so low intensity, steady state. Um, they're both really good for fat loss. I think it's all about finding what works for you. Obviously, more overweight people to actually hit a quick, fast, intense hit session is a lot harder. They're gonna um, sometimes pound in the body if you're doing runs, That's, it's a lot harder to do. So for them kind of people, I would pick more the low intensity, steady state. But for more someone who's sort of quite athletic and used to hard physical exercise, maybe going for that hit training as well. So like I said, I'm trying to keep these all short answers so it's not a massive video. But um, next question from Sean. How often do you work out, go to the gym? So I personally, well, at the moment, I, I am hitting it seven days a week, but I do not advise that. Um, the reason I'm doing that is obviously I'm trying to cut as quick as I, not quick as I can, but I'm trying to cut at the moment. So, you know, I'm really like, I like eating a lot of food. So the fact that I can eat a lot of food and then train seven days a week to kind of do that, I'd rather eat the food than have to train if that makes sense. Um, so eat the food and not train, you know where I'm going. So basically what I'm trying to say is my, the reason I'm training seven days a week is because my foods are high. Um, if they were slightly lower, I might take away my training a little bit. Um, but like I said, I do prefer to eat a lot more. So um, I train seven days a week. Two of those days are cardio. So whether you count that as not, and I do five resistance days. So um, at the moment, seven days a week. Sorry if I made that answer a little bit complicated. Um, Virginia, favorite songs to work out to? Good question. So my music taste probably isn't the best in the world. Um, I do like your kind of just your your standard songs. Sometimes I'll even have a, <laughs> to admit this is terrible, but sometimes I even have a little bit of Backstreet Boys playing. <laughs> but no, normally I'd say to get me fired up for the gym, um, anything off the Rocky soundtrack is fantastic. So my favourite song ever is No Easy Way Out by Robert Tepper. I'd say that was the number one. But yeah, anything really, whatever's on my playlist. Um, where are we on here? So I'm just going to scroll down through some more questions. So, um, at Cornish Coop, good name. Um, any healthy alternatives to drinking plain water? I hate it. So, I'm guessing you don't like plain water, and I do get that a lot with loads and loads of clients. Plain water is horrible. What I would suggest is doing exactly what I'm doing. So, if you're watching my current video blogs, um, I use BCAA drinks, so branch chain amino acids flavoured ones. So you're getting the goodness of the BCAAs, um, but at the same time you're obviously getting that little bit of flavouring. At the moment I'm using the cola flavour. Bloody lovely. So that would be my tip for yourself. Um, where are we? Dawn. Is it best to train first thing in the morning or late at night? Um, it's not best first thing in the morning. Um, the best time to train is always when your body temperature is at its highest. 
So um, whether that be in the morning, it could be. Um, but no, it's not not best, if that makes sense. Um, let's have a look here. At, well, I can't really pronounce your name, Prajes Duta. Cardio before or after a workout? Um, I would say if you're trying to optimize fat loss, if fat loss is a goal, then I'd probably say after, when you're at your most hottest, similar to the last question, obviously you're always better to train when you're at your most hottest. But when your fat is metabolized in the body is when you're gonna get better fat loss results. So getting your body nice and hot beforehand, then doing the cardio after is more beneficial. But for absolute optimum results, I do what I'm doing at the moment. So my two separate cardio days, keep them separate from your actual training. Because depending on your, your levels of obviously energy in your body, you can start eating away at muscle, which is definitely something we don't wanna do. Um, next one, Crazy Chris. Best time to take creatine? Um, I'd say post-workout. So after you've you've trained, and um, you know, I mean, you could have it first thing in the morning, but creatine absorbs better with carbohydrates. Um, so I'd say, sort of, if you're having that carbohydrate, um, you know, protein carb shake after post-workout, um, stick it in that creatine. I have about five grams post-workout. Ethan Dale, what's your thoughts on intermittent intermittent fasting? So um, I've personally never done. Uh, intermittent fasting so that's obviously where you're going a long time of not eating uh, and then obviously getting all your meals in at once I personally have never done that but I have seen a lot of people get fantastic results on that so I've got nothing really bad to say about it the only thing that I've learned from the studies I've done that is not optimal for that is when you're trying to build muscle as well so um, not great for trying to build muscle and get lean but if trying to lose fat it's meant to be pretty good um, so I just put ahead and knock at the door. Didn't. Uh, next question. Al Morales, do you ever drink alcohol? Yes. I, you know, I mean, when I'm cutting, I don't. If I'm on a strict diet, I won't have alcohol just simply because I feel like it prohibits my results. Um, whereas, you know, don't get me wrong, everybody likes a night out with their friends. Everybody likes to, you know, and if I do, I can have any, I can drink cider, which I know has got terrible sugars in. I don't like beer, I've never been a fan of beer. I do like the shorts. If I had to drink and I was on a diet, which I don't do anyway, I would say always keep it to your tonic water, squeeze a lime, maybe a little bit of vodka. Um, but I do drink, yes. Um, where are we on here? Brooke Talbot, favorite physique competitor? Great question. Um, so when you have your, your, your favorite competitors, they're always the ones that make you want to train harder, something to inspire to be. It's hard to pick a number one. If I did, I'd probably say Steve Cook, just because you know he's such a big name in the fitness industry. The biggest thing I like about fit, uh, physique athletes, the ones I like, are their attitudes. If they're bad attitude, they go straight down in my list. Whereas Steve Cook, I've met Steve Cook, he has so much time for everybody he meets. So massive thumbs up to Steve Cook, feel free to tag him in this video. Um, i would say number two, but he's well up there as well, nearly joined, I'd say, was Ryan Terry. Uh, again, I've met him before he was a big star, met him at Body Power like three or four years ago, and had nothing but time for me. Uh, a year later I met him again, and again, he was like waiting for me in the queue, he's put his hand up, remembered who I was, and um, again, give me all his time. So people like that are fantastic. Ross Dickerson as well. Ross Dickerson, uh, a friend of mine, we chat a lot. Haven't chatted actually for a little while, Ross. Um, but yeah, we always chat, compare different things. Another great person, so much time for you. So I'd say there are my three, Steve Cook, Ryan Terry, Ross Dickerson. Um, next question, so I went too much into that. So Risky Bets, great name again. Do I need to train abs or diet for a great six pack? Well, good question. Um, abs is, they say abs are always made in the kitchen and that's 100% true. You haven't got to do any ab exercises at all. Um, it's all diet based. But if you do want that big thickness and strength to the abs, although obviously your natural genetics are gonna play a massive part in that, getting, I personally find by weighted crunches and a lot of weighted stuff, that is what gets my abs a lot thicker than normal. So a little bit of both, but mainly diet. Um, next one, Spet Train. Would you recommend BCAA intra-workout? 
100%, definitely, yeah. So anything that stops muscle breakdown as such, and so, or not stops breakdown, but stops you eating away at your muscles, um, is gonna be fantastic. So BCAAs, I mean, I drink them throughout the day, but definitely, definitely into a workout. Um, Michael Shelv Shevlin, do you believe in IIFYM? So if it fits your macros, um, yes, that does work. And it's a great way of, obviously, if you don't want to have that strictness to a diet, it's a great way of dieting so you can eat what you like, but as long as you're following your macros. However, if you're looking for optimal body comp composition, it's not the best way to go. So um, good and bad to do that. Um, Glenn, favorite cheat meal? Oh, no, don't even ask me that. Um, at the moment, because I'm on my diet and I'm in week number eight, I could eat everything right now. But I would say my favorite, if I had to pick one to have right now, I'd say Chinese. I'd order about 30 pounds worth of everything. Duck, God, I mean, you're making me hungry thinking about it. But yeah, Chinese, pizza, everything. Um, Chip Robbins, in your opinion, what five things are most important to being healthy? That is a great question. Five, God, so definitely nutrition is number one. Well, I'm not gonna put them in order. Nutrition, um, physical exercise, this is a hard question. Recovery, so your sleep is of massive importance. I would say keeping consistent to your diet, so or whatever it is, just consistency, doing the same over and over again, it's gonna, event, you know, gonna get your results. Number five, I would say is gut health. So gut health is a massive thing. If you haven't studied that before, make sure you look at different gut health topics definite big help for that so that was five um, yeah you see what they all were next question Amol Bangar um, after the Arnold win is this Kai's Olympia oh yeah Kai Green yeah great win well done Kai Green is this Kai's Olympia this year who knows I'd love to see Kai Green win but unfortunately well not unfortunately but I, I do think it's gonna be Phil Heath yet again um, Karina, I can't pronounce your surname, sorry. I want to become a PT, do you have any advice? Great, great question. Um, if you love, you know, I mean, I have a real passion for fitness and making others succeed. So I'd say that was the best thing. If you've got the passion, it's already there anyway. But my advice would be, it would be study as much as you can, learn as much as you can. Um, Work on form more than anything. I mean, a lot of people lift big heavy weights with terrible form. I mean, I've seen some PTs who, I, you know, I used to be a PT, um, I used to have to assess PTs, and the amounts where I used to assess with WABA, WABA are a fantastic um, PT-based qualification system. So if you've got a qualification with WABA, thumbs up to you. Um, but they, they focus on getting your technique 100% right. If there's anything slightly wrong, and they get, they, you know, will be on you like anything. So I'd say keep in form, um, just teach and, you know, learn in correct ways. Make sure you're training yourself so you can get a feel of actually what you're doing before you pass it on to your clients. I always test things before I actually give it to my clients. But yeah, passion is gonna be the biggest one on there. If you love what you do, you're gonna succeed regardless. Um, next one, Jennifer, how do you measure body fat? Okay, so with my clients personally, I do skin calorie tests. Now I know there's a lot of things on websites saying they're rubbish and all this. As long as you, you, you measure them correctly, it's just a good way of measuring changes in the body. Um, if you're really, really wanting to get something really accurate done, I would say get yourselves a DEXA scan done. Um, Jamie Alderton, uh, another great physique athlete who I should have put on the list. Jamie Alderton posted a video about his DEXA scan. Um, and I thought that was fantastic. Never had one myself and definitely something I want to get done. But yeah, I'd say DEXA scan is more accurate, but I personally do use skin calipers for my clients. Um, Lee, can you hit the same muscle groups two times a day? Definitely, yes, you can do, yeah. I mean, I actually know people who train the same muscle groups three times a day, but definitely, yes, you can do two times a day. Um, Burns, blue. Uh, thing that most annoys you in the gym. There's probably too many to name. Uh, let me go through them. Just a couple, I'd say. People who don't re-rack re weights. Um, I mean, they're so easy to do. Once you finish with your gear, 
put it back where you got it from. If you, you got it from the rack, just tidy up regardless. Put all the weights back where they go. If the 20 goes on the 20, put it on the 20, not on the 10. And the other thing is just ego lifters, sort of the ones who lift really heavy with bad, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you lift heavy with perfect form, good for you. However, the ones who lift with terrible form and then afterwards slam the weights down, nothing more annoying than that. I mean, you, I can lift heavy, heavy weights. I mean, not compared to big, you know, power lifters, but I can lift heavy. You will never hear me making any noise in the gym. So um, that's probably the two biggest things that annoy me. I'm sure there's more. Um, where are we here? Enrico3937. Do you ever use fat grips? I do use fat grips and I think they're absolutely brilliant. I actually got an offer on Amazon where I bought mine from. I think I got them for about £10, something like that. And for forearm and arm training, uh, they're absolutely brilliant. I don't use them so much for chest, anything push. Um, no reason why, I mean you can do, but I don't. I normally use them for the pull, pull different exercises. Um, but yes, I do use fat grips. Eileen May, favorite exercise for abs. So like I mentioned earlier, obviously abs are made in the kitchen, but my favorite exercises for abs, I've got three. I'm gonna say ab rollout, so an ab wheel, jackknives, where you're obviously doing a leg raise and a crunch in one, um, and anything weighted on abs. So I'd say cable crunches were my three favorites. Um, James Morgan, heavy weight or perfect form? Good question. Um, I would say both. So I would say perfect form is always number one, but you want to be lifting as heavy as you can whilst keeping perfect form. So a little bit of both. Uh, Kuma Chen, what are your squat, bench and deadlift PBs? Good question. Um, so my squat, my best squat, I mean, I'm not a power lifter at all. Um, so I don't consider myself super strong at all. So obviously all these power lifters watching this are probably gonna say that's rubbish. Fair play. I'm gonna tell you in kilograms, uh, my squat best is 170. Uh, and this is for, I've done that for two. So one rep max, maybe a little bit more, not much more, that was hard. Um, my deadlift is 220, again, average. Um, and my bench is 145, so I've never actually done 150. Um, tried a couple of times, get it to about here, and then just get it assisted up. Um, if anyone touches my bar, I never count it. So uh, 145 is my best for chest. Um, I'll post at the bottom what they all were in pounds, I don't actually know. Um, Will Greer, how to deal with bulking and cutting when you have IBS? Perfect. Brilliant question, got this the other day when I reposted on my Facebook. So uh, Will, to answer your question, um, yeah, anything obviously with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, can be helped. And um, what I would say to you is look up SIBO. So that's small intest intestine bacterial overgrowth. Um, look that up. Um, it's a massive topic that people are studying at the moment and that's, a, that's one thing that they actually think is the main cause of IBS. There are supplements that you can take to actually help um, SIBO. Um, vitamin B12, vitamin K, vitamin D. You've got um, obviously digestive enzymes. Um, what else have we got? Zinc, that'll help iron. And there is one more, I'm just gonna say, I said digestive enzymes, haven't I? And probiotics, that's the last one. So they all help with that. So definitely look up that topic, but I would say sometimes there's normally intolerances in the body so keep an eye on the bread you're eating keep an eye on your like milk and everything like that or the lactose can be anything like that so just cut things out and bring them slowly back in if you find you, you then obviously find what is playing you up again whey protein is something that plays some people up change your whey protein go on to beef isolate um you know there's all different types of protein out there give that a go um al sibi uh, again these are all the new ones now coming in um, watched a video where you spoke about improving sleep with supplements. My sleep is terrible. Any tips for improvement would be great. Good question. Um, my sleep's improved massively recently. Um, the things I've done for supplementation, so I'd say the number one is probably magnesium. Um, I take a ZMA tablet. Uh, I also take magnesium separately. So ZMA is zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B12. 
six, I think. P6, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Um, so take it there, and that obviously comes in one capsule, but the taking magnesium on its own also is great. The other thing I've done was um, any stimulants you're having, so a lot of people have pre-workouts and anything like that, caffeine, coffee, cut those out. So um, try go, I mean, you can have them still if you're having them early, but try not to have them after three o'clock. Um, another thing is obviously, as you start to get towards where you're going to bed, come off your phones, come off anything, TVs, maybe read a book, dim your lights in your house, anything like that will just increase your serotonin in your body to obviously make you want to start drifting off. Okay, um, next question, let's have some coming in now. So we've got another one, Brett Thompson. How do you work out how much protein you should be having? Good question. Um, there's loads of different uh, formulas to how you should work them out and a lot of people actually do under eat protein. Um, I personally, when I'm, I'm giving, I, obviously it's all about assessing your clients. So if, if you feel like they, you know, depends on what they need, I'd say a good indicator, a good starting point would be one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So a lot of people say one gram per kilo. Um, which is probably, a, well, roughly half that. So I'd double that, which I'll give you one pound per, no, one gram per pound of body weight. So me, if I'm about, say, 220 pounds, I'd be having 220 grams spread throughout the day. Hopefully that's asked your, answered your question. Angela, um, weight training for women, cardio or weights? Um, both, I mean, you shouldn't, me, females shouldn't train much different to men. You've got the same body structures. Um, I know females are always worried about building muscle um, and getting too big. <laughs> That's the one I always hear all the time. I don't want to get too big. Um, you're not going to get too big. I mean, men naturally have testosterone in their body. Um, obviously, male hormone. You don't have that, so or you do, but you know you can have testosterone in your body, but it's not as high as men. Um, so you're not gonna get massive, massive big muscles like a man would. Um, and again, even men, men who are huge like that, I'm, I'm not putting, putting it out there, but a lot of people do inject testosterone. Um, and again, females who you see who are like as big as the Hulk, probably are taking something on board other than what they're actually doing training. Um, but you you know, I have females, I mean, take Paige Hathaway, for instance. Um, she's a big name in the fitness industry. She probably lifts heavier than most men you know. Um, her form is obviously spot on, and she looks brilliant. Um, so, I mean, she trains super hard. Probably, yeah, like I said, harder than most men you know. So there's nothing wrong with weight training. I'd say weight training, and get your cardio in on separate days, exactly the same as you, you should if you're a man. So no different, train heavy, get that dense muscle, that's what's gonna get you that toned look. So we're gonna go last question now, because I don't know how long this video's been, don't wanna make it too long because my home connection's no good and it takes me about five hours to upload these videos. So we're just gonna scroll down and I'm just gonna pick a random one. Let's go here, Andrew. How do you lose the last bit of belly fat? Everywhere else on my body is lean, but I have a little pocket just below my belly button. Probably a little bit longer than the question I wanted to answer. We've got about a 10 second uh, answer, however. Just to sum up quickly, I would say, um, obviously, that last little bit of belly fat is usually caused by one or two things. Um, the two main ones I see is your cortisol level, so your stress hormone. So again, sleep is gonna play a massive role in that, making sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure your general stresses are down on your body. So even things like um, any toxins in the body, so your alcohol and things like that can all put stress on the body, which can make you store. That's obviously why beer gives people the beer belly um, and things like that. Um, but the main one I'd say, again, is gonna be your insulin levels. So a lot of people, when they diet, they go healthy eating and they eat loads and loads of fruit. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with fruit. It's super good, super healthy for you. However, if you're looking for fat loss, you've got to remember that there's loads and loads of sugars in fruit. So although they're healthy sugars, they're still gonna spike your insulin levels. And when you're spiking your insulin levels, you are gonna store belly fat if you're spiking them too high. Um, so I'd just say cut down maybe on your fruits, replace them with more veg. Um, and yeah, make sure your stress levels are nice and low. So that's everything summed up on those. I don't know how many questions there were there. Um, hopefully it's helped you out if you didn't know the answer to some of those. If you did, then thanks for watching anyway. Um, if you do have any other questions you'd like to answer, like answered, post them in the section below. Again, if I get a great response to this, I'll also be doing a second video on this. 
Um, but yeah, you know, all I'm doing this for is just to see how many of you I can help out there. Obviously, make sure you follow me on Periscope. Thanks to everyone who has. Sorry if you posted a question on here um, and I haven't answered that. Obviously, I was doing this more as a YouTube video, but I wanted to keep it live so everybody knew this is how it was. Um, and yeah, any questions you've got, follow me on Periscope, Instagram at Curtis High, Twitter at Curtis High, and my Facebook page as well, which is Curtis High Fitness. So thanks ever so much for watching. Um, and again, hopefully I helped you out. Make sure you're subscribing to my channel and I'll see you all soon.